Hello Janesville and welcome back to Park Place Views, the monthly program that aims to keep residents informed by highlighting the people, places, and partners of the City of Janesville. As always, this program is brought to you by the City of Janesville and JTV Media Services. I'm your host Nick Faust and I'm the Communications Specialist in the City Manager's Office. Now in last month's episode, we were joined by Chief Jim Punkowskis of the Janesville Fire Department. It was great to hear all about what the JFD has planned for 2023 and what our community can do to stay safe and healthy. If you're interested in viewing that episode or any past episode of the program, they're all available to watch on the city's website or JATV's YouTube channel. Now today I'm looking forward to being joined by Senior Center Supervisor Linda Clevin. With the Senior Center's membership drive in full swing, I'm so excited to, see about, to hear about how Janesville's Action Place is showing our seniors why life really begins at 50. But first, a bit more about Linda. Ms. Clevin has worked for the City of Janesville for 13 years. She began her time with the COJ as a Rack Knight official and a building rental supervisor. She was then hired full-time as a Senior Center programmer before being named supervisor last year. Before coming to the City, Linda worked for 17 years with the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program. She holds a degree in elementary education with a minor in psychology. She's been twice named the City Mighty Oak and was awarded 2017 City Employee of the Year. She recently completed Civic Emerging Leader Training and is currently enrolled in the Leadership Development Academy of Rock County. Linda is also the Vice President of the Wisconsin Association of Senior Centers. Thanks for joining us today, Linda. Thanks for having me. Now, I know I just went over the, the career highlights uh, a bit, but before we get started, I thought I'd maybe give you a chance to tell the viewers anything else about yourself. Sure. Um, I'm a Janesville native, born and raised here. Um, currently, I live with my family, um, and we live outside of Janesville on a small farm. Oh, wonderful. So, Janesville is, is kind of home. It is. You. Well, wonderful. And I, congratulations are, of course, in order uh, off the top, Linda, because uh, last year, following the retirement of your, your colleague and friend, Janet McLean, you were named supervisor of the Senior Center. I was. How have the first few months been in that new role? Well, somewhat chaotic since yes. I was doing both my role as programmer as well as supervisor until we hired someone, which we have done. Mm -hmm. um, so in uh, November, we hired Brianna, and she is now the programmer. So things are slowly moving forward. Yeah, yeah, great to have the, the bench kind of full uh, at the center again because you folks uh, really don't take a break when it comes to activities and programs and trips. Uh, and so I could see how that was quite a plate uh, for a little while when you were balancing both acts. But I think off the offset then, Linda, I think it might be helpful to remind our viewers how the Senior Center operates. Uh, what department are you a part of and, and do you have a governing board? Sure. Well, we are part of the Recreation Division, which falls under um, the Neighborhood and Community Services for the city. Um, so... Uh, we also have an advisory board. Mm. Um, I don't know that they govern us necessarily, but they help with the running of the of the building. Yeah. And so we're lucky that they are volunteers um, that participate at the senior center, and they do fundraising for us, um, help us purchase things that unfortunately aren't in the city budget. Yeah. So they do a great job of making sure that the place is running smoothly. Well, and I think that's a tremendous thing to, to highlight when we talk about how the Senior Center functions is it's, it is a city, it's a city center, but uh, members and volunteer members that, that give back uh, in a way really help drive and expand the mission beyond what, what's really possible with, with budget constraints, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and thinking of budget constraints, how many uh, actual employees does the center have? So we have two full-time employees, myself and Brianna, mm -hmm. and then we have about four part-time seasonals that can fill in. For example, if um, I was gone to a conference and Brianna was out sick, they could fill in for us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I also understand that even with that, that lean kind of staff, efficient staff, the center has been recognized three times now with statewide accreditation. Why is it important uh, that you receive that honor, and how does that really kind of validate the center's excellence in serving its members? Sure. We've, three times we've been accredited. I've been part of two of them. Um, and it's really to make sure that we maintain the quality um, 
and the standards that are expected for a senior center. So really the accreditation is you're having uh, your peers, um, senior center uh, staff, usually executive director, supervisor, um, with plenty of years of experience yes. that are looking over your binder of what you have laid out for um, how to run the senior center, your policies, procedures, yeah. you know, um, all of that stuff, volunteer expectations. Um, and so it should be that someone coming in that doesn't know very much about your senior center can look at that binder yeah. and really get a full layout of how that senior center is running. Yeah, so it's a, a really comprehensive review of pretty ev pretty much every operating component um, yeah. that you have. And the nice thing is, is that um, we have a volunteer group that help with the um, accreditation mm -hmm. to make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah, well, I, that must be quite a process and, and volunteers, again, integral in that um, because not only is it kind of hard to, I think, synthesize, you know, how the senior center runs, but it's kind of hard to summarize just how many different kinds of activities you folks offer. I mean, could you give us maybe a, a sample example of, of what a week at the center looks like? Sure. Well, every day is different, of course, but yeah. we do pride ourselves at the Janesville Senior Center as having one of the most active senior centers awesome. definitely in our county. So we offer everything. You can play pool upstairs. Mm -hmm. You can do line dancing twice a week. We have ceramics. Yeah. We have three different art classes. Um, there is a water street band, which is kind of, I would say, folky band. Mm -hmm. We also have the blue velvet band, which is more of the big band era. Yeah. Um, we have bingo. We have lots of card games, canasta. We have cribbage. Um, sewing class, exercise every morning, um, yeah. book club, you name it, we probably have it. If not, we're happy to start a group Yeah. if there's enough interest. So, for example, we never had um, cribbage before, and one of the members came up and said, I would love it if we could play cribbage down here. I said, let's put a thing in the newsletter to see if anyone's interested. We did. We got enough people, so now there's a cribbage group. That is, yeah. Really, and like you said, member-driven, you know, the interests that, that come up, you you folks are happy to, to kind of work with. And, you know, anecdotally, I think, you know, that might have been a few months ago, I was in, I think, filming on a, a random Thursday, and there was folks setting up for Zumba upstairs. I think there was a dulcimer music group going on. Uh, folks playing pool and a ceramics class, and that was just a, a Thursday or a Tuesday afternoon. It yes, I mean we have lots of different rooms, so there yeah. are a lot of things going on in each of the rooms, and we also do special events. So once a month, and we brought that back in December. Um, we hadn't been doing it much since COVID had hit, but we do. Um, we have an entertainer come in of some kind, and then we prepare a home cooked meal. Mm -hmm and um, they can enjoy a nice afternoon down there. Yeah, that is, that's awesome. And I think something else, Linda, I wanted to highlight is since COVID, some other programs that are back online, day trips and, and tours with the Senior Center. Uh, what do those entail? Yeah, so every month we do a day trip. Um, it depends on the month as to what, you know, obviously in the summertime, we're more inclined to do boat trips, mm -hmm. um, outdoor stuff. We've gone to a lavender farm. Yeah. We've done, you know, lots of stuff outside. But in the winter months, we try to tend to go more towards plays, mm -hmm. musicals, some sort of entertainment that way. Mm -hmm. And our trips are open to anyone 18 and older. Yes. So you don't have to be a member of the Senior Center. However, if you are, it's $10 cheaper right. than it is <laughs> if you're not a member. So a little perk for being a member. Right. Um, but so, you know, if you want to go with your mother and she's 80, you certainly can come with her. Or yeah. if a grandchild that's over the age of 18 wants to go with a grandma for mm -hmm. the day, they certainly can. Yeah, that is, I mean... That's something I think maybe folks don't realize is, is those day trips are open 
uh, they're incredibly affordable, and I'd encourage anybody to, to kind of check out in, in your newsletter on the website what those, those day trips all kind of comprise of because you, you put together a tremendous itinerary, uh, and it, it is a busy day. It's a fun day. Yeah, uh, we try not to repeat anything. Yeah. Um, since the eight years that I've been planning out trips, I don't think we've repeated any specific um, program or play. Um, but we have, you know, lots of them coming up. And like I said, even if you don't know anyone yeah. at the senior center that goes on a day trip, we're a friendly group and yes. we're happy to have you join us. Gracious house indeed. And then also into touching on the, the national tours uh, you folks are doing this year. I understand there's a couple of them coming up. Right. So we have a New Orleans trip coming up. Mm -hmm. And then we also have, um, Ma would that be Maine? Yes, Coastal Maine. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So both of those are through Colette. We always work for our extended trips with um, a professional mm -hmm. that plans out the itinerary and stuff. And since w one of us usually go with our local trips, yeah. um, we rely on the group Colette or Globus or whoever we're working with to mm -hmm. provide the um, escort um, for those particular trips. Yeah, yeah. So an opportunity perhaps for folks looking for something beyond a day trip, but, you know, are, are still more comfortable going with a traveled sort of itinerary, all booked, airfare, hotel. Correct. Yep. And, and someone will be there to help you along the way. Um, and the nice thing about those trips are um, they're relatively affordable. Yeah. I mean, we aren't currently, normally before COVID, we used to do one um, extended that was overseas mm -hmm. and then one that was domestic. Um, currently, we're sticking to domestic yeah. at this time. <laughs> so that's why we're offering the two domestic. But we do have previews um, scheduled yeah. so they can uh, check our newsletter and see when it is and they can come down and certainly get a better idea of what is included in the trip. Yeah. Awesome. And talking about coming on down, I also wanted to highlight the, the center itself, the building, a little behind the scenes. We're currently filming at the Hedberg Public Library, but you are in a truly historic building, and that is an old Carnegie Library uh, here in town. Can you tell us a little more about the building? Sure. So it was a Carnegie building. Um, Andrew Carnegie donated lots of money um, all around the United States to build libraries, and we were fortunate enough to yeah. receive the money to build our library. So it was built in 1902, completed in 1903, served as the library for Janesville. And then in 1967, the library moved mm -hmm. its location. And um, originally, the rec department had taken over. They were on the um, second floor. Yeah. Um, so that would have been the offices and stuff for the recreation. And then the lower level was for the senior center. Mm -hmm. And then the third floor was used for the little theater. Oh, wow. So, um, but in a short time, they figured out that the senior center needed more space. Mm -hmm. So the recreation department moved back to City Hall, and we took over both floors. Eventually, the little theater um, couldn't stay upstairs. Yeah because of fire codes and different things. Mm -hmm. Older building. Uh-huh. So um, we've been there ever since. Yeah, it is, and it is a truly, even the edifice itself on, on Main Street, it's a truly incredible People building. sometimes still, they see the front of the building and they think <laughs> we're still the library yeah. and they come around um, for, for new people to the city. But, and that's the other thing to point out, that our main doors are located on Water Street, right. not on Main Street, because you have to go up the steps, and a lot of seniors, you know, it's not handicapped accessible. Yeah, so around the back off of Water, and ample parking that provides The parking is folks. in the back, yep. Very nice. And, and for people that maybe want to visit or, or learn more, how does the center's membership work? Sure, so it's $25 for the year. And it runs the calendar year. So if you join in February, it's good till the end of December. Um, doesn't matter when you join. Mm -hmm. uh, the $25, what does it get you? Yeah. Well, you can come anytime you want, Monday through Friday, 8 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. We're open. Um, 
and that, like I said, is Monday through Friday. Um, besides that, we have a membership appreciation yeah. um, that's coming up in March, and it's a free breakfast for our members. Um, and then we also do a free lunch in July um, mm -hmm. for our members, and that's part of it. Right now, um, if you join in January, you're going to get two tickets to our raffle. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do a Chinese raffle. You got three if you joined in December, two January, one in February. Mm -hmm. And we have 13 fabulous prizes um, that have been donated. Yes. Um, and they can put the ticket in whichever of the canisters they want. And then at our membership um, appreciation, we will draw the winners and they can take home their prizes. Yeah. So some perks, some perks to membership. Uh, in addition to some discounts on, on trips and travel, um, where can folks who maybe want to learn more about the center or learn more about membership, where can they go to find that out? Well, the best thing, Nick, is for them to come down to visit the senior you. Yes. center. Yep, visit us. We're happy to give them a tour of the building, mm -hmm. find out what their interests are, see if we have anything that they might be interested in. If not, point out some other things that maybe they might be interested in. Yeah. Um, so that's really the best way. And then talk to the other seniors that are down there. Yeah, yeah, truly it'll, membership vouches for itself in effect because if you talk to any, any member I've ever spoken with, I mean, it, it's just all encompassing. It sells itself uh, when you hear it firsthand. That is very true. We've had a lot of new members, 33 the last count, that had never been to the senior center before wow. just this year. We're at 377 members. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that we, uh, you know, that it continues to grow and we can get back to uh, our numbers that were visiting us and being members down there before COVID. Yeah, and that is a good point. Whether that leads it to my next question, which is, you know, very few city operations were were untouched in terms of the pandemic. But I know that it definitely had an impact on the senior center and your members. How has that recovery been? It's been slow. Yeah. Um, talking to other senior centers, it's, it's all the same. It's a slow recovery. People still, some don't feel comfortable to come out in groups, mm -hmm. um, especially in the winter time here. Right. And we can't offer as many outside right. um, activities as we can in the summer. Um, but it is slowly, it's, our numbers look better than they did last year this time. Yeah. So I'm hopeful that the numbers will continue to increase. Slow and, a slow and steady recovery. And as you mentioned, uh, the center has, has brought some adapted programming with that in mind. You know, some folks are health conscious or maybe um, are predisposed to pre-existing conditions. And so it sounds like in the spring and in the summertime, uh, you, you provide ample hiking opportunities, you know, outdoor opportunities Walking as well. opportunities. You know, during COVID, we had a lot of history. I love history. And yes. we did a lot of history walks, uh, learning about your city yeah. uh, and lots of fantastic and interesting things. So we would do some information, historical, and then we'd take a walk around that area. Yeah. Um, which they seem to really enjoy. We also did a lot of conference call. Mm -hmm. We played bingo that way. We met at the park and everyone yeah. stayed in their car and we used the transmitter to, <laughs> to call the bingo oh, numbers and so they cool. would honk their horns oh. when they had bingo. So we tried a lot of different things just to make sure we were incorporating yeah. so that people could still be involved. And, and, you know, one of the new things that we have now, we just finished our patio uh, it was kind of late, like into November, right. um, but we have a patio now down there, and I'm excited to offer some programming involving the patio outside. That's awesome. Yeah, and I imperative and maybe talked about too seldom how important maintaining those social bonds were um, over an isolating time, especially for our seniors uh, who for really for their health and safety did have to kind of isolate themselves a bit physically. Uh, how tremendous uh, the center was in, in really bringing those social opportunities and making sure people stay connected. Yeah, I mean, even we did drive-bys, you yeah. know, and handed out small things, you know, for Halloween, we, you know, dressed up, um, at the time Janet was still there, we dressed yeah. up um, in our Halloween costumes and, and we handed out a little treat to everyone who drove on by. So, yeah. and it was, you know, the cars were lined up. They just loved being... Um, being able to see us and yeah. see the others. 
so important for mental health. Wonderful to, wonderful to hear. And I mean, for all the activities the center puts on, uh, which I, I think we're, we're really covering well, there must be ample uh, opportunities for volunteering. Uh, what are some of the kind of service prospects uh, for folks? Sure, volunteering is a very big part of us down there. We have over 50 volunteers. Um, so we have volunteers at the front desk. Uh, they greet the people, they take payments, they you know, really are the face yeah. um, when people come into the senior center. So we're always looking for substitutes mm -hmm. um, for the front desk. We also have every group has a volunteer that's in charge of the group. Yeah. They make sure that the people sign in mm -hmm. um, to our attendance sheets so we know who's in the building. Right. Um, we have people that help us in the kitchen when we do our special events. So yeah. if you like cooking, um, I mentioned the patio. One of the things is we're looking for volunteers that will be willing to tend to the, the flowers that we plant right. out there. Um, so there is always, and if you know, if you have a specific skill or talent yeah. and you want to teach it to others, we're the place. That's true, and that's that's a really great point to highlight, Linda, because A, you're a service-powered organization, uh, like you mentioned, but B, if, if folks have a talent or, or a hobby that they're interested in and, and they think that, you know, it would be worthwhile to teach folks, you're a, you're an opportunity, you're a vessel for that, um, Absolutely. that program. And you've got the members who are always active and willing and ready to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. So folks should definitely take you up on that opportunity and, and thinking towards the future. Uh, Linda, as a supervisor, what are some of the, the challenges or obstacles uh, facing the center down the road? I think probably our biggest obstacle is to get people to come there because when they hear senior center, yeah. they think it's for old people. Yeah. They think it's a nursing home yeah. or an assisted living. I mean, we've had people ask how many beds we have. Right. We're not that. We're, Janet um, put it best, we are like a boys and girls club for seniors. Yes. So if you want to exercise, if you want to learn a hobby or talent, mm -hmm. um, if you just want to be involved, yeah. that's what the Senior Center is about. Yeah. So it's changing people's perspectives on how they see a Senior Center. I mean, when you have an 80-year-old tell you, oh, I'm not old enough to go to the Senior <laughs> Center, you know that, you know, they're not getting the right message. Right, right. It's a perspective thing, and, and it is. I challenge folks to, to take a visit because it is as lively as any place you'll find in Janesville, and I love that. It's kind of that Boys and Girls Club. It is that social space for older adults in our community uh, to stay active and, and to stay healthy, and so I think that's a great kind of notion to kind of challenge moving forward in 2023, and and thinking about that, how do you and your staff, before we wrap up here, Linda, stay innovating and, and stay thinking of new activities, new trips, new programs to kind of keep that lively space? Well, partially, I think we listen to what the seniors want. Right. Um, other things, you know, we're always talking to other senior centers to find out what's maybe all of a sudden popular there. Yeah. You know, we had not um, done anything with cardio drumming, and that's becoming extremely popular. Mm -hmm. And so we've started a class now. Right. Um, so I think it's paying attention and, and having access to, like, Pinterest and other yeah. things to get ideas for classes. Yeah. So... And you don't really, you don't stop. It, it's kind of a continual... Always. You're just trends, Looking for the next... Yeah, exactly. Listening. Trends are... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that's, it's wonderful to hear, and again, members integral to that process. They are a part of the future programming of the center, and well, then before we leave, uh, you have been a, a focal at the center for some time, and through RSVP have been working with, with seniors for, for a considerable amount of your career. Um, I think that work can be tremendously valuable and rewarding. Um, and certainly the way our, our population in this country is aging, we're going to need folks whose careers are focused in serving older Americans uh, and our seniors. 
Uh, I thought before you left, Linda, maybe you could tell us what you like most about your job and your career. I think it's just helping them enjoy the best years of their lives. Yeah. You know, you get to the end, you've worked, now it's time for you to enjoy. Yeah. And I think being part of the senior center helps them do that, helps them find passion. You know, we've had people come in um, and said, I've never had any experience with painting, but I'd like to, to learn about yeah. painting. And some of the work um, is outstanding. I mean, it's surprising the talent they have that they don't even know they have. Right. And it's bringing that out in them. Yeah, yeah, you're helping unlock new passions and uh, opportunities that, as you say, really allow Janesville's older residents to enjoy, you know, the, the best times uh, of their life. Exactly, you know? and getting to know them. And, you know, they've been around for a long time, some of right. them. You know, we have one member who's 102 years wow. old. The stories he can tell yes. you, you know, things that he's seen that, you know, we've never seen. Yeah, just a wealth of, of knowledge and, and wisdom that you can intuit kind of by proxy, by, by being there and working with those folks. Exactly. It was very rewarding. Um, and I think that about does it for us today. Uh, Linda, I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. And you and your senior center team I want to thank because you do a truly incredible job um, of creating such an active and social space. Uh, as we talked about, that is so important for the enrichment of your members uh, and, and so meaningful to their lives. So thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank you, our viewers and residents, for tuning in today and for all you do to help make Janesville a community of choice to realize life's opportunities. I invite you to stay connected with the city by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, signing up for emergency notifications from the JPD via the Nixa Lab, and registering to receive our weekly city press releases by visiting www.janesvillewi.gov forward slash email list. For Park Place Views in the city of Janesville, I'm Nick Faust. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next month.